Steve is best known for his symbolic paintings, encrusted surfaces jam-packed with lattices, neural networks, cracked TV screens, helicopters, Ferris wheels, and octopi pushing against the painting's physical edges. Steve first gained larger attention when his work was included in the Eight Artist Survey, Remote Viewing, Invented Worlds, in Recent Painting and Drawing at the Whitney Museum of American Art in 2005. In that ex exhibition, Steve DiBenedetto invented worlds that was infused with elements derived from science fiction, the speculations of the ethnobotanist Terence McKenna and the visionary German architect and painter Bruno Taut. And from surrealism, particularly Max Ernst and Oscar Dominguez. In their destiny of detail and horror vacui, the painting seemed to channel the wired, fanatically detailed supernatural scenes of the Victorian painter Richard Dadd and J.G. Bauer's dystopian visions of a bleak, decaying, man-made landscape. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Very nice, Patrick. <laughs> Good job. So, uh, hey there. Uh, you look familiar, most of you. Uh, I, I, um, so I, I just got it in my head that the best way to approach this, at least for me now, is a kind of virtual uh, studio visit, let's say, where I just wanted to uh, show images and discuss like what I'm dealing with in the studi studio currently, because there's a kind of, I don't know, like a weird, I'm trying to, uh, I, I feel kind of excited about the way things are crossbreeding and yet maintaining some specificity. Like this is one wall that I had set up recently where uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I got this notion of all these drawings and items were accumulating on one, on this wall or a bigger wall actually than this. And uh, this, this accumulation or this encrustation or barnacleizing as I sometimes call it, started to suggest, uh, I don't know, some type of possible uh, display maybe. I've been, uh, I don't know, considering, I, I feel like in the paintings I've done, which Patrick sort of hit on with his introduction, there's a ten I'm realizing by having this procedure of externalized, there's a piling up, like this idea of stuff just piling up and accumulating on, on a painting surface. And it became interesting for me to uh, consider letting all these drawings haphazardly or these, these kind of photo elements start to um, uh, uh, just, you know, interact with each other and, you know, hopefully creating unexpected types of, oh, this is another situation of little paintings. But like here's a current little amalgamation of things in the, I don't know where the other images are. Uh, and and uh, the idea that there were just unexpected, like more haphazard types of things happening literally in the studio. And uh, it got me in this, I'm gonna find, I have another image of the uh, studio space. Jesus, how does this thing work? And you know, the idea that, I mean, here's a good example of one item that, I guess the dynamic that occurs when, I, I had it in my head like what I was saying, that maybe there could be a show or a display of all this stuff tacked to the wall in a small room, like a gallery space, where it's like maybe walking into, you know, this thought process, like trying to create an environment where all this information, all these concerns and uh, I'm having, but that, you know, that strikes me sometimes as a bit familiar, a bit like, you know, just a tacky, tack, things tacked to the wall only is going to say so much. And the idea of having, I guess, wrestling with the notion that there could be items like this, for example, which is a framed combination of elements where drawings and photo things are crammed into this box and there's paint uh, occurring, like paint, uh, on the frame and on the glass and like some of this tape, for example, and this camouflage stuff, which I know Patrick will appreciate, uh, is, is, is on the actual glass. So the, you know, th this became a, a bit uh, intriguing to me, how this type of thing could co coexist. This sort of, as I call them, more um, like deliberate, let's say, uh, compositions could coexist with these more random, like here's a weird thing. I don't, don't ask me what's going on here, but this is a little painting like about this big I did like two or three years ago and it's, or six actually. 
and it's floating around the studio and I don't know what to do with it. I'm trying to figure it out. And then I have this frame and I cram it in the frame looking for, I don't know, some sort of way of repurposing the painting. So, and, you know, the, 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 the idea of combining all these materials with it, I don't know. I find uh, uh, incre you know, it, it's starting to generate new ideas, new possibilities for things. There's a piece of bark here I had laying around. So, and tin foil in there, which I, I think uh, I used initially as a kind of like, like wedging kind of material, like to keep the painting in. So it's, things are happening in kind of a hap like I keep saying, a haphazard sort of fashion, hopefully uh, reveal oh revealing uh, some new, con I don't know, combinations of things that, and then there's this character who I, I don't know, some portrait that I was practicing, you know, painting faces, and this guy came up, and then it got crammed in a frame, and uh, <coughs> starts to, you know, suggest some new possibilities for things. So the idea of, of I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of weighing how these things can um, bring some new exhibition possibilities into the picture. This is one of the first uh, framed pieces that came out of this process, like a year or so. Well, these things do tend to take, like the paintings have done, take time to accumulate, and things are weighed and taken in and taken out. But the, uh, like a lot of these are older drawings, and here's an image of, um, from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, for example. You know, this, these are things that have, fueled the work in the past. And so for me, what's kind of unique about this approach has been the first time I've let source material and some of the um, like, like more, more conspicuous signifiers of things that I've, I've used to generate paintings in the past, like from the mid-90s, let's say, on, to start to like surface, like bubbling up to the surface. And, uh, you know, physically, this is a thing that has, um, once again, tape on the surface of the glass and uh, items inside. So there's a type of uh, interaction with the frame. So it's not just a, a formally, um, you know, framed work. It's like the, 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 the uh, what a containment, as it were, is somehow playing a role in the thing's identity, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about. I like that, that idea uh, as, a, as a component in all this. You know, and here's another situation, you know, these things get sprayed on and a piece of metal's hanging around the studio, so it gets uh, thrown in there as a uh, possible reflective component. The text there, I just, Threw on. It's from the movie Easy Rider. It happens to be an excerpt. I, I've, I've been fixating on that film in 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 uh, in many regards lately as a type of um, oh, I don't know a kind of personal uh, um, you know uh, point of of where an aesthetic. I mean the aesthetic. I seem to be constantly coming back to, which is some type of psychedelic or 60s based thing, and I'm trying to figure out like what could have contributed to that. And that movie has played a role when I was you know, a kid and feeling like I never saw it, but I came uh, around you know, after that movie was out, and, but I had a very strong memory of those characters as uh, icons. You know? And I felt ultimately, I think what's happened is that I'm feeling weirdly um, or have been feeling uh, uh, ripped off or something. That the, the way that movie, Easy Rider, uh, and other things represented a kind of utopian, at least this is what a lot of history and media tells us. There was this kind of utopian 60s era, and that, that movie, for me anyway, was a, was a major symbol of that. And growing up in a, in a period where you feel divorced from that, or that it didn't really happen, like there was some kind of disappointment. There's some unrealization of the utopianness of that. I'm not saying I feel, you know, like I'm fully, uh, utterly decided on one side or the other that this has been a good or a bad thing. It's just that's the way it happened, you know. 
we have a, I did anyway, grew up in that period where it didn't really add up to much. And uh, so the film, and, and I don't know, for me, I think part of what's interesting about what's going on in the studio, at least at this point in time, is just uh, like, letting all, uh, like letting these things happen in a, in a very improvisational manner and just like wondering, you know, and literalizing, externalizing these images. Like I have, of course, now like this image here is a whole bunch of small paintings that are up. So for me, the, w the dynamic of what's happening is going from sometimes wanting to make just purely abstract or, or just investigatory paintings that just end up having an identity of their own and, and they don't really have specific signifiers or images in them. But I do feel that they're informed ultimately by all this other stuff. Um, and these things in particular, I mean, these are all somewhere between 20 and 16 inches, maybe something like that. And they have like very encrusted histories, some of these paintings. I mean, they're really like fossilized in many regards. I mean, this one here is, you know, these things have accumulated a lot of of, of data materially. I mean, they sit around the studio for a long time in some cases and just keep getting repurposed. I, I've always maintained that uh, it's either being incredibly cheap or Catholic that I won't let anything get sacrificed. You know, like everything is redeemable. Like no matter, this I think is an important point, frankly, that any state that any work is in can somehow be redeemed. <laughs> you know? Or at least, at least they, there's some information there that can you can relate to, and uh, I've, 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 I feel it can be particularly gratifying when you you pull a piece out of some really truly horrendous state and and give it some new life, which uh, you know I, I think we should all uh, leave leave that option open. I mean, it depends on how you work, of course, but uh, everything you know can be better. I mean, another side to what I'm going to show is the fact that um, I was going to show some paintings in uh, different stages of being realized. I don't know where they are in here. These are like little sketchy things so that, I mean, part of me thinks it could be really cool to do a show where all this stuff is tacked to the wall, as I said earlier. But the idea of, of just what? I mean, the idea of just transplanting the data in your studio to a public space seems maybe a little sketchy. So how does one, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of intrigued by the idea of, of, of trying to articulate that in some fashion uh, and, and figure out how it could be most, made the most sense of. So we've seen these things. Um, here's a, a close-up of one of those small paintings that I, I started a while back. I guess, uh, uh, the TV is in there and the octopus and, I don't know, some weird sun situation. I mean, this thing started, parts of this thing started two or three years ago and I just gave it some kind of, you know, uh, disruptive treatment, you could say, where, you know, you take a picture that you feel strongly about parts of but a lot of it sucks and you're just like, fuck it, I'm just, one day it's like I'm going to smear black all over it and then scrape the black off and homogenize it in some way and then add some things. So uh, as I've said uh, in the past, sometimes it's to redeem something, let's say. It needs to be, you know, run the risk of destruction. You know, you really need to be able to conjure up the will to try to uh, destroy it and, and, and hopefully uh, bring it back in some way. I mean, that's, that for me has been an ongoing methodology. Here's another one of these small things I pointed out earlier that has um, you know, a very uh, a diverse and encrusted surface that uh, it's kind of a figure in there. It's upside down. I'm not necessarily proud of that. It's just that's the way it goes, you know. I mean, sometimes these figures uh, are still around even though you try and, you know, destroy them. This one goes back a few years, parts of it. Um, you know, like this, like I said, the studio practice yields, you know, for me the painting thing is just a, uh, sometimes it's a very specific pursuit and sometimes it's very um, 
haphazard, very random and exploratory. I mean, that, that's what I'm finding is happening these days. It's another funny little painting that's been popping up. That's, this thing weighs about five pounds, actually, at least, or ten. It's, it's, it's a rather thick uh, creature. That one's I'm feeling good about. It's another one that took on a, I guess one would have to say, aboriginal kind of quality, some have remarked about, which I rather like. Another small, highly textured thing. For me, like, it's fun to try to, uh, well, fun or whatever, maybe that's not the right word, but gratifying to negotiate between these um, tendencies to be very, like, deliberate and calculated, let's say, and, delin and depictive. And in this group in particular, I'm feeling like <clears throat> the way that's been, oh, God, what would you call it, have a, a, a kind of language of, of total disregard for the, for the uh, more, Ex, you know, highly determined language is uh, kind of exciting to see where it's a little bit screwed up. That's a bit older one, which started this process in some ways. <laughs> this painting is like this big, but it's pretty big in, in this. Uh, so just a, a lot of this, well, for what it's worth, this, this is a good example of a technique, or I don't know if I'd even call it a technique, where uh, I'll take uh, certain paintings and just smush them onto other ones, you know, like, and just get this residual, uh, residual accumulation of dots and, and whatnot. So there's a, you know, both a, a weird, maybe sparkly quality as well as just a kind of very dumb, basic splotch uh, factor going on. Uh, this one, I can't explain what's going on there. That's just what. Oh, here's a weird painting I just did, uh, started, I should say. Well, actually, this painting has some old parts to it. It's about four by five feet, and uh, I, I, I just uh, decided it was time, you know, this is a good example of where it's time to get explicit and paint a UFO and an octopus on top of this um, really encrusted nightmare of a surface and, <laughs> and try to extract something out of that. Um, I mean, these, you know, sometimes I think it's crucial to just have to draw some kind of line in the sand, as it were, and, and just, you know, plop some things out that really need to be um, externalized or, or, or stated. And uh, this one's not done. I'm not going to tell you it's done, but it's, it's looking kind of interesting to me. I'm a little bit fond of I, this, the way this red octopus type thing is being depicted was a lot more impulsive uh, than I usually do it and it sort of felt gratifying to be almost like graffiti-like about it, like to, to, to feel like it's just, you know, a little bit um, plastered on, like, like on a wall, like a bit of a sign. So we'll see where this one uh, goes. Here's another amalgamation of objects that just got, it's hard to see, but this is all painted on the frame, like there's a glass frame and this is painted on it, the black is painted on it. The photos of helicopters are on the back of the glass and then behind that is a whole nother collage of stuff. And um, I'm kind of intrigued by this idea of, 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 of an overload of information that's at the same time being kind of canceled out by, by a lot of other data that's going on. And you know, and you'll get moments of, I don't know, sketches that, that seem uh, informed in some way. This has just been a recent strange little development there. Oh, here's another example of like what this, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I mean, I, it might be kind of fun to show something like that, I, I think. Uh, you know, it would go on even more. But it has to be, it would have to be in a very concentrated room. I mean, this, this is what I'm just trying to figure out, is how you can just create this mass of data and, and, and a type of chaos, which I've always been attracted to. I mean, most of this stuff is coming out of my own work as well. It's not 
found, let's say. You know, it's all stuff that I've actually made. Now this, I, I'm just going to tell you, this could get really embarrassing, okay, for me? <laughs> because I figured, I've never done this before, but I guess for me it's maybe therapeutic. Patrick, what are you doing? Yeah. It's therapeutic <laughs> that I might show a painting that's gone through a million procedures, and I don't want to hear shit like, oh, you know, it was so much better. Why did you fuck it up? Because <laughs> it really, I hear this enough. But <laughs> no, the point is, is that here's this painting I started, right, uh, of these African type figures. And it was kind of a proposal that was thrown at me. So I, I don't know. I thought it might be curious to show why things kind of go where they go. So this is like, I don't start everything this way, but it, it, it helps clarify and let's say, relax one from time to time to have an actual, like, sketch or, a, you know, a thing to react to. So this happened, right? These, uh, it's a long story with the African thing, so let's just concentrate on formal concerns. So I, I filled it in, and then I started painting it in this really, I thought, very vigorous and very, like, you know, impulsive way, which felt like a real liberating quality, and then the, God, it really jumped ahead there, but um, yeah, I guess that's what, how, how it goes. This, though, this, this was a very, gra like, this is very brushy and, you know, and, and, and kind of uh, loose. And then this whole situation, which this is this African item that I essentially was basing the whole thing on. And then I sketched in this kind of octopus-like thing, which I guess I'm somewhat, uh, you know, habitually tend to deploy. And, you know, then scraped away with this little rubber thing. And, uh, and that felt like a really good uh, moment there. Like that, I was like, oh, that, that's, that's sexy. Like, that could work. And the same technique was used with this guy. So it started taking on this kind of Haitian voodoo vibe. And I was rather uh, intrigued by that. And then, you know, then the various uh, conditions start to... Uh, or to uh, whatever here. Well, Pat, what happened? Uh, we need the. the oh, I see. All right, I went too far ahead. <laughs> well, somewhere along the line, it felt um, um, I don't know too separate. Too. It need, it, this is a good example of like, well, something's got to go. S something has to be sacrificed for the better mint of the painting. So a bunch of white gets tossed in there. Next thing you know, that central figure is history. But you know, you're confident you can always replant these characters. It turns out that never really happens. Uh, just so you know, <laughs> it's like I always think, well, I could do anything. I can bring them back in. But then it took on this weird, kind of cool X-ray black ghost blob, which I thought was kind of uh, 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 successful. I mean, not all these pictures are going to be great, but, you know, little changes occur, and the dark uh, thing starts to uh, take over a little bit. And this mushroom form, I, mean, I don't know, that seemed to be like, like something that could easily occupy this realm. And then I got it in my head, and, and, it, and this is part of what I wanted to talk about, that those, what the fuck is that? Why are we back to this thing now? Those small paintings I showed earlier, which I don't know how to get a hold of, but uh, were these things looming in the studio that seemed, and to certain people, seemed to represent, and this is what happens when you have people over sometimes. It's like, well, I really like what's going on in those small ones, but the big ones, I don't know, they're all scattered, and they're not, I'm like, ah, that, that's, that's not good. Like, why are you <laughs> saying this? And, but in a way, you know, it can be true, and, 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 and you have to, uh, so I, I mean, this is a f six, seven foot painting, maybe, I don't know. What's happening here? We're out of, uh, is it, it's going back, I don't understand that. It's kind of a, there's definitely more stages, because, you know, it gets worse, and then it gets better, <laughs> <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> what happened? Well, the story of the thing is is that it, um, you know, it felt to me like it, it, 
it was essential to somehow challenge. Yeah, there we go. All right, I can do it. I'll just use the, uh, this thing. It felt in some way that to be, I don't know, to be sort of serious about it, that it needed to be maybe handled somewhere along the line like those smaller paintings, you know, where something drastic occurred, you know, and hopefully it would, it would regain, I don't know, or it would gain some kind of like power as a, a unified structure. So in spite of all the, I mean, you know, yeah, it looks good. And, but it, in spite of all the disparate information, I thought uh, on a formal level it needed, uh, you know, to run the risk of, of being unified, uh, whatever that means. So I went and, you know, you, there's this pinkish pallor taking over and then this darker thing. So it ends up kind of getting, I think, a lot more mysterious in some ways and less depictive and a little more, there's a lot more physicality and you're, you're kind of looking through this dingy, strange blackness to, and finding, uh, hopefully anyway, finding imagery, images in there. And uh, Sorry there's a glare on this, but you can see that there's this tonality that's, you know, seeping. I like to think of it as like it's seeping through what were these figures and or are in there, and now they're just kind of buried and, and encrypted in some way, which I, I rather liked. So I think currently, yeah, well, too bad, a lot of glare on that, but you can get the picture that this thing has had, and it, now it's been sort of in blackened a bit more, but this is maybe a more accurate picture. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually rather fond of the state of this more I don't know what to call it. It's like it's episodic and there's still evidence of separations of things and yet there's this tonality or this sense of a, a treatment or something that's in, been infused in the, in the painting. How long have you been working on that? How long? Well, actually this one is one of the few paintings I could probably accurately date. Um, <laughs> this drawing business probably started in no, like May, maybe, um, or a little later, maybe okay. midsummer, something like that. Not super long, but you know, I I want to, um, you know, part of this painting business, as we call, as I call it, <laughs> you know, is is you gotta. Uh, it's like knowing when to, you know, stop, knowing when to just like leave things, and then knowing when it's right to like cross that line and, and run the risk of doing something that you're, you're wildly uh, unfamiliar with, you know, and, and hopefully it'll yield interesting results. All right, so the bot, all right, let's just run through this one because I need to do this, okay? I just need to, I need to see this. No, so I started this painting, this isn't even the original state. Oh, Jesus Christ, what does it take a while? This is a big, bigger one than the last one. This one is like pretty substantial, like seven or something feet, eight feet, something like that. So it was like this for a while. I, I got it back from, from storage and gallery or whatever, and it was like driving me crazy. So I, I did this big, I don't know, kind of mushed up data thing and then turned it up. This is a good, also, I mean, I don't think this is radical, but you know, a lot of these paintings are worked on upside down, sideways. I'm, I'm particularly fond of, in all honesty, the notion that uh, I, I'm happiest when I honestly, uh, when I feel like a painting doesn't really have an orientation, you know, like it can actually be a little topsy-turvy and you don't really know where you're at, what your axis is. So this thing, whatever, as usual, the white, I, I, I tried to like open up the space a little. And then, well, here you go. This is a pretty big jump, I suppose. Uh, not seamless. So, uh, you know, it de I decided that maybe this painting should become, um, in all, you know, a thematically speaking, a landscape of information that a pre-linguistic human was, was searching through. I mean, this is kind of an old theme of mine in some form. So it started to reveal itself, in all honesty. I mean, the whole thing. But to be honest, too, this, like the, the inclusion of this, where I just taped off a rectangle and just did this spontaneous painting and was a 
direct outgrowth of the collage business, you know? And, and, and I had, you know, had a dialogue with friends of mine about, well, how are you going to get the collage stuff and the painting? And it's like, shut up, I don't want to hear this. Like, can I just work on... But, you know, they're right. It's nice that the people have the dialogue. So this little figure character really haunted me and started looking necessary, but it started looking too naive-ish or something, or I don't know. It wasn't, so he had to go at some point. He or she, really. I don't like the specifics of the gender thing. Um, so it's back to all these disparate elements on a, on a big surface going, well, you know, once again, how can this be brought together? Should it be brought together? Is it better to have discordant? I mean, I, I love the idea of chaotic, discordant elements. But at the same time, it just looks like a mishmash of things. So decision making just proceeds, and you're plopping along. Um, and uh, once again, this painting, I felt like it could use some of that drasticness and oh so then this guy got put in again like a, a much darker searching figure and at the same time I'm sort of weighing the argument for the narrative like should this be pushed like a kind of semi ape dude like phantom character reaching for a mushroom type thing I you know what are the what are the consequences of painting this and you know what am I getting into but I I'm all for it so he came and, you know, then he got sort of phantomized there or x-rayed. And it started looking kind of good. And then I put all these dots. Oh, these dots were done with a, just paint tubes, you know, like just kind of dumbass, but very, you know, energizing. It helped energize the situation. So they started proliferating. And then I had, well, this was a... I mean, this is just a technically strange thing I want to just talk about, even though it has nothing to do with art, per se. This, I had the painting this day, right? I was there. It was like, oh, great. I photographed it. And you see this area? It's all, like, filled in. I came back the next day, and suddenly it was gone. I mean, it was, like, completely bizarre. It was like somebody showed up and just rubbed out that area, and I don't have any idea why it happened. Uh, I'm not Mr. Technical. I'm not going to lie, but it, it <laughs> was just like the shit disappeared. I didn't get it. Oh, there's a close-up of them, just for insurance purposes or something. <laughs> and I just put it back in and proceeded. But it was a very strange, I mean, I really don't understand why that happened. It just seriously disappeared. So we're back to figuring out how to, what? How to resolve this painting? Is it done? It's, you're not happy with it? Now it's upside down. It looks kind of good like that. It's got a lot of information. Then lines, like, let's try to tie it together with crazy black lines, maybe, diagrammatic thinking. And the whole time I'm freaking out because I'm thinking, oh, if this starts getting really crusty, it's going to be a nightmare. But, you know, trying to keep it thin and scraping stuff away. And a, a cool part, a thing, uh, down here, it, it, it started to, whatever, read like it could use some. So that, I plopped in that white, and that seemed to help clear things up. Then another figure, you know, I figured the figure was, was kind of crucial for this narrative. So this guy kind of came in, this greenish dude came into the picture looking for something or apparitional maybe, I, I thought of it as. But, you know, in real life these things are often uh, different. So then, then he got scraped out into this state, which I, I'm actually kind of into. Um, and then more recently, I think just the other day, this crashed helicopter got, <laughs> I don't know if, if, if how clear that is, that got <laughs> plopped in there. So I'm, I'm like feeling like, okay, this is, this is now, I think this is kind of where it's at now, this, with this helicopter comp Oh, that's the very early stage of this thing. It's, that was a whole other ball game I didn't get into. So this is whatever. There, here, here it is. I don't know if this is done exactly, but I'm sure uh, it's closer. It's feeling like the components are starting to add up to something. So that's, that's what happened in that, in that picture. Any questions? Oh, that was another earlier stage. How do you think the, this scale affects the way that you sort of build up 
the surface because like the smaller ones you say like some of them are like 10 pounds you know and then like these you you still paint out and scrape down and add and you know subtract but there's not that sort of history to it is that something that um do you think is because of the scale or yeah i don't know be better or worse or whatever i mean well, it's a good question. I mean, I guess this is why I wanted to do this was to, um, in a way, a a explore that discussion of is it mandatory? Like, I guess I have it in my head that there's a certain kind of clarity that comes with the way certain people make work where you can do everything on the small, like Richter. I always, you know, Gerhard Richter, right? He'll smear a little, do a little smear painting this big and he can do a huge one the exact same, with the same impact. People seem to really, uh, for whatever reason, I mean, appreciate that and really gravitate towards it. Now, why can't, I guess part of what I'm thinking is why can't on this scale, an eight foot thing or whatever, may, why can't it be episodic? I mean, a symphonic, let's say, production is not, is different. You know, you have multi, and then you know, have your little string quartet things do different things. Piano things do different things and massive. When you have more information, you have more, I don't know, more of a, a different kind of medium. But I don't know, it's a good question. I, I, this is what I'm sort of wrestling with, is, is is it really the only way to be like totally badass is to be able to treat this scale of a painting? Like one of the, like, people like to say this, like, oh man, imagine that on that scale, you know? And I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm not absolutely certain it has to be that way. I mean, part of it has to do with what the, you know, what you're trying to say, what your story is, you know? I like the I like this mode of working where there's these different, you know, iconic elements somehow trying to occupy the same space, but the space is unclear as to where it is. But there's enough investment, I guess, in the production of the painting. I mean, must enough investment in physically and where you you know you you can be convincing about it. You know, the other thing too is, you know, all this whiting out to me is like a way of you know, clear, clearing up the space. And I've, I've often, of course, been hammered with people saying, oh man, you know, you need more air in these paintings. You gotta, it's like, no, I don't want, I want to cram more shit in the thing. You know, I don't want, I hate that. It's like, you know, why is there these, these accepted ways that, you, you know, paintings have to get orchestrated? But uh, yeah, I, I think you're right on one level, Patrick. The scale does change the, uh, manner in which one can be a little more um, physically improvisational or physically ir ir irreverent, you know? And I, I don't know. Is, is it because it would like fall off the wall, like tear the wall apart if you let it get too built up? Or no. Believe me, there's much heavier stuff that hangs on walls securely <laughs> than my, my <laughs> stupid paintings. But. No, it's not, f it's not an engineering thing. It's more of an attitude thing. It's more of like, like um, um, you know, in a way, the bigger ones are more like drawings I tend to do, I think, at least today. You know, I mean, I've had, you know, varied scales of paintings work. It's just this is where things are at right now, where there's this funny three-part deal where these small crusty paintings are hanging out and then I have all this collage chaos and then these two or three larger paintings that are tend to be more cinematic narrative and just I don't know in, you know infused with with data so um, that's that for that sequence do you want to look at these drawings quick can we do that this other disc then on a completely different uh, wavelength, of course, are these, um, what do you need to do? I just, I did a, a bunch of these um, small scale, smallish drawings uh, from May to like a month or two ago that were kind of interesting uh, on, a, on a different wavelength to look at. What do you, what do you need to eject? So you keep saying uh, some of them are very much like narrative. Can you explain the narrative a little bit more? Like what's your idea of what's taking place? Well, um, hmm. Uh, I guess 
the narrative unfolds, I mean, it, the truth of the matter is, I guess, <laughs> the underlying narrative is um, essentially based on these images I've, and, and the kind of data that I, uh, I think of that they refer to, helicopter, octopus, and other, I don't know, I guess essentially psychedelic based, you know, signifiers. So I mean, in all, I mean, sure, that big painting we were looking at, I, I had it in my head, like I said, like, hmm, this could be, I mean, this fellow Terence McKenna in particular, who, who I based the use of the octopus on um, from a phrase of his or an observation from like, you know, 88 or so, uh, talks about um, the way consciousness may have been imparted to us um, on an, in an evolutionary moment, you know, however long ago, where a pre-linguistic or pre-conscious humanoid was maybe ingesting psychoactive substances. Of course, you don't, you know, I, as far as I know, you're not really taught this. But he proposes that, you know, with, with a certain amount of, I don't know, research, that what if this happened? You know, what if, what if a, uh, you know, what if consciousness or, or was in some way the result of um, ingesting some mushroom or something? Or as the missing link and, and, in the landscape. So sure, I mean, on one level I'm thinking, you know, I'm, invest I'm engaged in this painting activity, but on the other hand I'm thinking, well, I want to leave that option open as maybe a way of fueling, uh, feeding the way these elements are interacting. You know, where that figure is possibly absorbing information from its landscape. And it's, I I've done this in the past, I've done these paintings in the past where there's like a, a sense where the environment is encoded as I like to think of it, with some uh, uh, kind of information or significant uh, data, you know. I mean, the, the extent to which it gets more or less explicit is what I'm always, you know, weighing on some level. Uh, this is a bunch of drawings I did, like I said, uh, like all the same size, 14 by 17 inches the, over the summer that um, were rather useful, uh, you know, exploration of um, language and things like that, and, and a certain optical. This one's called brown chrome, which I guess you can see. Uh, it's the dollar sign. It's colored pencil, oh. just colored pencil. Um, these aren't in any particular sequence, as far as I can tell. I don't know what happened to that. So these just became, i uh, actually doing some of these in, at, in my apartment and, and listening to various things on the internet. Um, uh, and it, they were used for a show in Great Barrington, some of these. And they, uh, you know, they emerged from dollar signs being like, well, money, you know, thinking about money a lot. So <laughs> it's like, let's be clear about that, okay? <laughs> Uh, then there's a lot of verbiage that, like, this is, this one, I don't know if this is the finish, everything is not under control is one of the phrases I was fixating on. A lot of these are uh, language-based. This is a little funky photo of, uh, this is one of the first ones of this group, uh, uh, I guess a remnant of a kind of architectural concerns I had turned into a kind of vaguely mystical looking, you know, construct. These are uh, <clears throat> the initials of the Beatles for no particularly good reason, <laughs> except the guy that wanted to show them uh, had an idea about the Beatles, so I said, I can accommodate you, uh, which I did. And then these like kind of blasty things occurred, and these structural things occurred. Uh, this says, you must relax, which um, I did a few versions of. Um, I mean, partly, once again, what's behind a lot of these is, is like a certain dialogue with oneself and, and certain, like Alan Watts, I don't know if you guys know Alan Watts, is kind of a Buddhist fellow from the 60s and 70s, English guy, I was listening to a lot of his things and getting uh, informed by that. This one is particularly good for me as I had to write what, what you do when you do what you have to do as a way of I mean, in all honesty, I see these drawings not unlike the octopus helicopter UFO thing of like, you know, 
let's just get this out of our system here, you know, and, and, and externalize it and hear you say it. And uh, I, I found it rather useful. Hippie thoughts, that says, I, I, you know, I, I just these things happen. <laughs> what are you going to do? Some of these are rather scruffy photos. Sorry about that. That's another one that's uh, everything is under control on its side. This is one of the la last uh, ones that says, you must relax, a type of encrusted uh, language breakdown. This is a more recent uh, dollar-based drawing, kind of psychedelic money situation. I, I don't know. That, that was an earlier one, which, uh, boy, this is kind of a freaky frame thing going on. But you get the picture. And then there's that one again. I don't know how that happened. That's a dollar sign mixed with an X structure. Just trying to, you know, establish these things. Oh, this one says, if it could happen once, it could happen again. Which I phrase that I, I, I found it interesting because to fixate on these phrases which come from varied sources that I found lend themselves to lots of different things. Like, I think when I first frankly heard this one, it may have come out of a, a, a documentary on big bangs and things like that and quantum physics and the idea of like if things could happen once it could happen again and I started m dwelling on that phrase for different purposes like like for example if you could have had a on a personal level a certain moment of s something significance you could actually can happen again <laughs> you know like like mantra mantra type stuff you know like telling your yourself these things are not are not uh, nothing's over that doesn't say anything it's just a structure thing these are just kind of fun ones. Another everything's under control. Just optical. Oh, that's a pretty cool one, I think. That says we blew it. <laughs> which, well, this is specifically, of course, from Easy Rider. You know, it's an a, this is this phrase is an uh, this is an outgrowth of the movie, which there's a phrase in the movie where they are sitting around and feeling really good and and Peter Fonda just says we blew it and there's really no explanation what he means but it's a it's a it's a particularly uh, significant moment in the movie anyway for me it became like a thing to fixate on as a uh, as a you know a branch out of that film and once again you know you throw these things out there and they can get interpreted in different ways which I I rather appreciate this is another you must relax drawing uh, I like the idea, like, I got a little nervous doing this one because I felt like I was going into, like, new wave type artsy, I don't know if you guys know new wave design, <laughs> like, bad post-punk rock kind of <laughs> edgy, like, the bang, uh, go gos kind of period, you know, that kind of thing. I but I figured I'd, I'd go with it anyway. Okay, I think that does it. Any questions about any of this stuff? That's that's about the uh, lay of the land there. Do you think you'll do large space paintings? I don't know. It's it's actually surprisingly. Uh, it's a good question. I I I've thought about it. It's become a little tricky translating the graphicness of these things into painting for me. I haven't quite figured out how to how to do it yet. But I mean, it seems like an attractive idea definitely seems like it could be uh, it could be effective you know have you put any of the text into your collage pieces yeah yeah there's some verbiage floating around through those things um, not exactly in this mode but there yeah there is some of that um, you know in there but I feel for me it was kind of satisfying to find a way to finally get text in the work in some form because I feel like it's been this evasive in fact I even I ran across something somebody wrote a while ago somewhere some review and they said you know you surprising text doesn't show up in his work or something I thought yeah that's true thanks for being annoying and reminding me <laughs> but it's it, it you know these things kind of gnaw at you like but it, you know what was f useful to me about these things was 
yeah, I actually felt like I could get a, you know, I felt comfortable with this body of phraseology. It was, you know, it wasn't like random, completely random, you know, like searching. It just kind of made sense to do. It seems like you're, you're still really exploring the medium of painting and drawing. You know, I know you have a whole body of work that you didn't show us any of. That That's seems, right. That seems very cohesive, and but it seems like you've sort of thrown a lot of things out there. It's still like your style, but it seems like um, I, I appreciate that you're like that you're still trying to get. I don't know. Like I don't think better is the right word, but just uh, develop. Often artists get in a situation where they just keep repeating themselves. Yes, I, I've, I've been you, trying to do, do that do for that? a long time, failing <laughs> miserably. I admit. I mean, it's just something you, you you're naturally tend to tend to you know explore new things, or is it? Um, hmm. You know? Well, that's I, yeah. I mean, no, I think it. I think the f part of it's being kind of restless, and part of it's like. I don't know, I'm not giving a shit for continuity. Like, I just think that we should be at a point historically now where you can make a, a, a position out of having a diversity of concern. I, I, I'd like to think that that's, it's not that unusual. I mean, various people ha have done it. But I do hope, I do believe in, yeah, I do think that it's possible. I don't like to say this, but I do think that, uh, it's important. I feel like I want to, I have a, you know, like a deep investment in the exploration of painting. And the way, you know, part of hopefully, if any, if things that are made have any effectiveness, is because they, you know, there is some kind of um, investment in really wanting to, like, engage in the medium uh, and, and try to squeeze as much out of the thing as possible. Um, I mean, for me, like, using this imagery or these narratives that I've, admittedly sometimes portrayed more clearly, but I've always been, a l frankly, a little resistant to overt narrative, meaning that um, it's a way out, like, like embracing this realm of information, the McKenna business and Arthur M. Young, who's this guy who invented or developed the helicopter that everyone knows, the bubble, you know, helicopter is a way, for me, it's like a, a terrain that I feel like I, it's like an antidote to a lot of the same old art historical, or art, art tendencies of re, you know, replaying a lot of the same strategies of, you know, appropriation or, you know, self-referential. I mean, you know, whatever, that's all fine. I mean, a lot of people are very good at this sort of stuff. But I, I rather, I don't know, I feel like this is territory that one can really, um, explore and get, and it's actually, you know, for the, given the art zone as a place that presumably anything goes, it's amazing how, like, creepy it is sometimes, it's still for people, oh, you deal with that stuff, you know, like, like, I want to get my, you know, hands dirty with it, <laughs> like, you know, be a little bit more explicit about it, and, uh, uh, and sometimes you encounter people that just are like, or you do a lot, that they just want to hear the same story over and over again about how modernism, you know, still needs to be in some way clarified or subverted or, I mean, I don't, did you guys see the Wade Guyton show, for example? Mm -hmm. yeah. You've seen it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally appreciate this guy's ability to make um, objects in a unique way, but to me, at the end of the day, I come home thinking, well, okay, that's fine, and now it's time to get to work. <laughs> you know, it's time to start. I always thought the idea was to own and, and, and uh, invent your own kind of world, you know, or, or, or in some way engineer a different, you know, unique place. And I'm nothing against him. I mean, this is on the record, of course. So, <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, it's, but let's face it, you know, in the old days, things used to be a bit jousty, you know, like you'd, you know, you'd, you'd go to, a, you know, you make your claim and you, you, you live with it. And you, you know, you do what you can. So, uh, no, I appreciate that. No, I do like the idea that the investigation is, is ongoing, if that's what you uh, mean, Patrick. Yeah, that's, that's, that's truth of the matter. Do you feel like you're explicitly talking about the use of psychedelics? Or 
Is that something hmm? that you talk about, like using psychedelic drugs? Uh, I, well, I, you could say so. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm not supposed to be so hesitant anymore. I don't know, because you know Oliver Sacks, the mm -hmm. neurologist, he just wrote a book about his use of psychedelic drugs. Right, I haven't read that. But. Yeah, I just heard his, him talking about it and sort of outed himself to the world. The one about hallu hallucinations, is that the new book you read? Yeah. Yeah, what do you what do you think about that? Um, I think it's really interesting that yeah, I think that like there are just intelligent people in the world that who at some point or another or maybe all the time want to investigate their consciousness and take drugs and mm -hmm. maybe um, maybe that's not seen as a smart thing to do anymore. But I think he learned like he clearly learned a lot. I, I totally agree. Yeah, the the stigma against the the drug thing has become so. I mean, I, definitely, I would not ever remark that. Oh, yo, everybody take drugs, and you're gonna, you know, be Steve Jobs, you know, who famously took LSD and had a major kind of epiphany. I mean, there aren't. Not no. This should not be endorsed in, across the board, but uh, it shouldn't. It also should not be so heavily uh, stigmatized as a, um, you know, evil, uh, what would you call it, uh, addictive activity. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are uh, things that have a long history of being done in various, you know, tribal societies as well as in scholarly uh, realms. And, uh, you know, like Terrence McKenna has a great line where he says, you know, for psychology not to embrace um, hallucinogens is like an astronomer not using a telescope, right. something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, where this is a t it can be a tool. You know, and I think today uh, a lot there's actually seems like and Sachs is a good example, like an enhanced discussion around that material, very much in a like neurological zone, right? Yeah. You know, that seems to be the like a safe place for this stuff to get discussed, like. Not in terms of like weird, you know, unicorns and fairies coming and, and uh, you know, <laughs> meeting you and taking you to some strange, you know. But I, I, not that I'm opposed to that reading either, by any means. But uh, there is, it does seem like it's in the air more. This, and it, it's getting increasingly okay to talk about. My attitude is like, well, you know, this stuff is, I don't really know exactly what it provides and could provide, but it's undeniably something. There's some, and I rather err or, or, or engage, as I said a minute ago, get dirty with this information and you know, run the risk of at least raising, yeah, like raising the um, opportunity for the stuff to get discussed. And if, in fact, there's something seriously significant in that material that comes out in the future, I'm willing, I mean, I guess I've said this, you know, publicly, you know, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, putting that stuff in these paintings, you know, like encoding, as I call it, the paintings with this, these kind of images, you know, uh, I hope it runs the risk of down the road maybe triggering, you know, some kind of awareness to this um, body of information. That's my own way of kind of giving the work some kind of significance that, I think escapes a lot of the, you know, rigmarole of whatever, the aesthetic conundrum, you know, and, and maybe helping to contribute something to uh, saving mankind. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> just a small, <laughs> well, you know, you got to play for stakes, right? <laughs> but then again, it could be completely idiotic. I'm not, you know, it, it's completely, uh, but, you, you know, it's like you got to know what territory you can own. And I'm totally comfortable. I mean, in, in the early mid-90s, I remember, you know, having whatever level of little crisis you have making work. And I'm like, God, i got to figure some way to make something that's better than the previous or whatever, clarify things. And this, you know, UFO and, and psychedelic stuff had been hampering me. And I thought, I, I actually, f if I had to pick one place that I privately even, you know, would want to put my chips, it was in that zone of concern and data and books I had. And, and you know, then it just became the thing to, you know, make the work about.
So uh, I don't know. That's just the way it plays out. You know. Well, there you have it. Something along those lines. Sure. No problem. <laughs>